All right, back into game two. Obviously, I'm going to go first. Try to get a salty run back here. <laughs> um, Speaking of um, salty run, I was um, watching this Yugi tuber and uh, he bought. This is when Spell Chronicles went up. <laughs> oh my he god! Bought a place at Spell Chronicles <laughs> when that whole thing on Zodiac happened. Oh no! And then the next day, he found out it was just hype, and when he got his Spell Chronicles in the mail, the guy sent a packet of salt. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> they were, went up to like 60 bucks or something like that. Something ridiculous. No, 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 no. They went up to like 5 bucks. It, it was only really? Lot. Yeah, it was only like 5 bucks. Oh, okay. I, I thought they went up a lot. Oh, no, no. That was um, Mystical Raphanel. Mystical Raphanel yeah, went up massively Mystical during um, the Yeah, even now, it's still kind of like 5 to 10 bucks. It's a, it's a decent card. I, I like the concept behind it and the fact that Yugi used it. <laughs> I think it's because it's never been reprinted. I want to say. Yeah. Kind of like the same thing with Vanities, why it was so much. Yeah. Vanities was short print, too. It was a $30 common. That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. That was... Oh, my God. That, this this might be what Chicken Game's going to be, though. I, I think people should buy up Chicken Game. Nah. Because, I mean, the card's okay, but I can never see it going up that much. Maybe if, plus, it, maybe plus if Upstart really gets hit. Oh god, if Upstart got hit, like I think Hoban would cry. <laughs> I think there's no offense a to Hoban, but I think yeah. there's a thread in Reddit or something. There were, people are talking about what would happen if uh, Upstart got hit, and someone was telling saying that Hoban would die. Yeah, that, and if Reckless got banned, he would just like, I quit the game. I'm Reckless. done. I'm just going back to writing articles. Does he still write articles on ARG? I haven't seen yep. I haven't he seen his in a while. He I won. just saw him at the uh, Kissimmee Regional I went to. Oh, okay. He won yeah, he's... ARG Las Vegas. Yep, I heard about that with uh, Magician Pepe. Yeah, I with believe. Magician Pepe. Um... And I, I was at the Regional too, and it was funny. I saw him walking around, and then this guy walks past me, and I hear him say, Man, the Hobans, I won the skinniest mofos here. <laughs> he, he got a lot and, skinnier. And, yeah, like he really did. Like he's not a stick by any means, but I mean he's definitely a lot skinnier than a lot of those other people at events. He, like the big ass dudes that have like their ass cracks hanging out. It's pretty nasty. Yeah, he used to be pretty. He used to like not be so fit, but like I was so surprised when I saw his picture, like just a year or so later, and he looks so different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I always joke around with my buddies, like, yeah, whenever I go into a Yu-Gi-Oh event, I might as well just wear like a muscle shirt because I'm probably like one of the most fit people there. Not trying to like make fun of them or anything, but it's just like Yu-Gi-Oh players need to take better care of themselves. Like, don't be wearing pants that like sag down past your ass when no one wants to see that mess. <laughs> like, it's just so nasty. Yeah. No offense to any players out there, but it's just like you know, like most players will say, you know, take a shower before you go to the event. Yeah, I know I do. <laughs> the guy I take a shower the night before, and I'll you know use deodorant and everything else before I leave because I don't want to smell like a pair of booty booty butt cheeks. No mirror force. Friggin no mirror it. force. Attack with no fear. <laughs> These are the days where, where you could attack relentlessly. Yeah, there's basically no way to punish you except with re reinforcements. No battle tricks. I'm going to reinforcements your own monster and then I'm going to play uh, shield and sword. <laughs> Alright. More, more UE level top deck in here. <laughs> card of Sanctity. We each draw. Card of Sanctity. I wish they printed the real Card of Sanctity. If they did, they'd probably make it something like you can't use this in a real duel. Yeah, I would rather they have that than, the, tokens. than the crap that they actually printed. I do like the fact that they printed um, uh, Glory of the King's Hand. I like using those as tokens. That oh, yeah. Really cool. the That, like the two Pegasus or whatever, yeah. The, yeah, the prize cards. Yeah, the um, the, the prize cards from the first series. Yeah. Um, I'll play this. Mm. Oh, now I know how it feels. I wasn't, I was never put on your swords last game. I was thinking in my head, well, what if he has the space? I'm like, wait a minute, he doesn't have space. Yeah, there's no space safe. I mean, that didn't come until Magic Ruler. Or uh, Here, Spell Ruler. Magic Ruler as they call the it. game so much. Like, my god. Yeah, there's so many cards we still use for Magic Ruler. 
yeah it's it's crazy like it still blows my mind um oh no we got blue eyes what is a trihorn dragon okay all right. <laughs> don't be asking me what this is it was in your build <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i just assumed it's blue eyes he's gonna go back and look at the video what the hell why did i put trihorn why, why did i put this card in this deck <laughs> It was the only high level dragon. It was one of the only other high level dragons that was available. Was Trihorn Dragon a lot of money back then? Um, I don't know. I think it was a secret. Yeah, because I remember I remember seeing some, like even in stores and stuff where they're like secret rare and it like came out of a video game too. It was a video game promo. Oh, sorry, that's two turns on Yeah, it's two turns. Um, this is the last one. No, my next turn is my last turn on your swords. Yeah. 38. Swords is so funny. They move it around so much, these first few ban lists. Like, it's like the Chaos Sorcerer of the early Yu-Gi-Oh. And Ultimate Offering, because Ultimate Offering's been everywhere. No! No! Please tell me that's amazing, but okay, it was a wall. Alright, alright. That's, that's pretty pro play. <laughs> I was just hoping, like, please don't suddenly have Trap Pull out of nowhere. No. I, I did have the blue eyes though. I should have. I should have activated swords. I did miss misplay. I did have the blue eyes in hand, but I was afraid to trap hole, and I was like, "Well, yeah, I, I don't want to lose the blue eyes." So I was waiting. Like just desserts. I'm not sure when to activate it. I think two is probably the most people would be willing to commit to the board. Mm-hmm. Just because it can do so much. And plus, like, if you commit two to the board, you don't have to worry about space in this format. Yeah. So, like, if I end up, for whatever reason, being dumb, dropping five monsters, you could just hit me for 5k, which is almost game. And, and I mean, if I'm already at a deficit by that point, and, like, trying to make a comeback, I'm probably losing anyway. Yeah. Plus, there's not many other options for trap cards anyways. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, man, this format, like... This is the first time I've ever played this format for you guys watching, and um, I mean, I've played GOAT format a lot. Um, shout out to my buddy Gage, because we've done GOAT versus Yada um, several times. And I've never played this format, but this format is just, like, you can tell, like, it's the nostalgia. Like, when you're running vanilla, it's, it's nostalgia. And uh, Trap Hole is just so good, and monsters like Blue Eyes and Trihorn are just so amazing. It blows my mind at how much these cards were actually so good back then. You look at them now and you're like, these cards are so trash. Yeah, it's pretty crazy to, to see. And this is actually a very skillful format too. Because a lot of people, they want to go back to GOAT. Maybe they this format is less appealing just because there's not that many effects you can activate. But it's still, it's a lot, of, it's a lot more thinking than doing. You have to think a lot in advance how you're going to use your cards. Because each card is very precious to you. Yeah, exactly. That's why, like, when I thought in advance in game one, I thought about setting the Man Eater bug when I had the Blue Eyes on board. But I had to think ahead, like, well, he could have this or that. He could have the Raigeki. Um, I want to be able to maintain more cards in hand than him so that I have more options. Um, same thing with Goat, you know, it's the same concept. Um, and for, like, even a lot of people still say to this day, if you can master the Goat format, you can master pretty much any other format because it's the same thing just with a higher grade of difficulty basically well the same concept excuse me that would make more sense yeah but this was fun we we should um we should definitely do this more often or even more videos together or you know whatever it is that you guys want to see just let us know in the comments below because uh this was definitely a fun time doing this and uh fox you better be posting more of those history of video videos because i like sitting back chilling out and just like having a a thing of popcorn and just like chilling out watching those videos because it's a lot of fun to look back at those old videos and kind of like see like what it was about like of course Jinzo was BA back in the day which that was pretty badass what you did with the whole like almost kind of Terminator voiceover with Jinzo I was like oh this is freaking sweet <laughs> so thanks yeah I I try I try to put a little bit of work in the intro yeah put a little hook you know try to get people into it excited about it because I know it's boring to listen I don't want to lecture to you guys because I get lectured. I've been lectured to for my entire life, so I I understand that you guys need a little excitement. So I try. I personally like history, so like whenever it's it, it may sound like a lecture, 
of history like i'm not saying that you do like you're quite the opposite you don't sound like a lecturer but i'm saying like even if it did sound like a lecture for me personally i wouldn't care because at least i'm learning about something that you know i enjoy doing you know so like even like with the history of gaming like even if the person sounds like they're giving a lecture it's still interesting to me just because it's something i enjoy doing um but as far as like how you present the videos i think that they're spot on um for those of you guys coming from Fox's channel, y'all probably don't know me, obviously. Um, but I've been in YouTube for five years, and I mean, I've I've been through some some crappy formats along that time too. Like I've been YouTubing since Infernities were tier one, and um, I've been through some ca crappy YouTube stages. Um, I've made some crappy videos. Uh, like I was telling Fox in my very first video, I said uh, this is going to be perfecting the Infernities segment one. And yeah, you guys, I'm just going to show you my gadget deck profile here. And I was like, didn't even realize it until like I looked back at the video like a month later. I'm like, why did I say that? So, but I definitely had a blast doing this video. And um, if you guys, again, you know, if you want to check out my channel, I have great discussions on there. Gaming content as well that I post every now and again. I like to stream on Twitch. Um, I like to post my streams that I do on YouTube to my channel. And uh, if you guys would like to support me and my other friends that I've made through the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, please come and subscribe and uh, check me out. Yeah, so make sure you guys go check out Avery's channel. He's got some excellent Yu-Gi-Oh! content. He's more of a competitive player, so I'm sure a lot of you guys are interested in that. And I will definitely have more past format duels and that kind of go along with my History of Yu-Gi-Oh! series. And if you guys are interested in doing these duels, Post in the comments section below because I'd definitely be willing to duel uh, any of the subscribers, viewers, and of course I want to do this again with you, Avery. This was this was awesome, and it'd be nice to kind of go through the formats and experience each one one by one. Yeah, dude, for sure. Yeah, that'd be totally fun. I'm totally down for that. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it and want to be a part of it, you guys can leave a comment in the comments section below. Send me a private message and we can work out a time and we can go back and do an old format together. Give the video a thumbs up and make sure to check out Avery's channel. That's it for this video. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching.